Welcome to Deeply Rooted, a web series on mindset. My name is Tony Wisdom, a.k.a. Tony Gaines. I've spent over 20 years in the music business as a producer, engineer, label owner, and executive. This show is dedicated to changing the narrative on success. I reached out to the most successful people I know. I want to know what drives them, their greatest mistakes, their best advice, their secrets to success, and how all of that has shaped who they are today. Take a journey with us. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Season six, man. Um, over 40 episodes at this point. And it's been really awesome. A lot of different walks of life from all over the globe. Um, we've been to Africa, Canada, England, you know. It's been really cool. And I'm anxious to keep this thing going and to continue to have these awesome conversations. Um, this next guest, his name is Zach Busha. Um, he's a professional MMA fighter, a veteran in the game. And, you know, he runs a gym here in Lawrence, um, Lawrence Fight Club, you know, passing on his skills and stuff. You know, this it's, it's is really awesome. And I've known Zach since he was a little kid. Um, I was friends with his big brother. And before I bring him on, I want to share a story about Zach. I'm not sure if he remembers, but we were bomb squad um, rap group about to do a show at the at Tremors downtown. And right next door used to be a, a restaurant called La Familia. And we were in, you know, I don't know, the show hadn't started yet. The guys were kind of turned up and in rare form. And Zach was working at La Familia and he was taking the trash out. And as the guys walked by, he had dropped the trash and like nobody stopped to help him. They kind of, they might even kind of laughed at him, you know, but he might not know I recognize him, but I knew that was my guy, you know, so I helped him get the trash up and, you know, just moved on. But I always respected Zach for, you know, being a hard worker. And I got a call from his mom later on, you know, a couple of weeks later, like, you know, Zach really appreciated that. And it's, I, so I bring that story up because, you know, it's really about the small things and you never know what type of difference you can make in someone's life just by a small gesture of kindness, you know? So without further ado, I will bring Zach on and we'll get this thing started. Thanks for turning tuning in, y'all. Yeah, there he is. How you doing, sir? Great. <laughs> Did you remember that story? I don't actually. <laughs> That's awesome. That is that is awesome, man. Yeah. So I've been, uh, I've been hit I've been hitting the head a lot since then, so uh, I can only imagine, right? Man, you've been out here getting it, man, and, and you're still going. You know, yep. that's crazy. And um, so just briefly, could you could you give me a little bit of like your professional background, who Zach is professionally? Uh, as far as the mixed martial arts portion of my life, um, I did martial arts from a really young age. Um, I don't know if you remember Dwayne Lewis. Um, I do. Yeah. Yeah. He was my, he was my first instructor and he was a big part of my life. He's like another father for me. Um, and he got me into martial arts from a really young age. <clears throat> I think I was like three when I first met him and then started doing a little bit here and there. Started taking martial arts seriously at about 16 years old or 15, mm -hmm. I think. I actually uh, started taking it really serious. Um, moved out to California as soon as I graduated high school. And um, I was doing, I took that to kind of full contact uh, fighting right away. Um, mm. MMA, MMA was just emerging. Um, I actually thought it was going to be um, only legal for a little bit. It was still, it was still illegal in most states. And um, uh, over the over time, just kept going with it. it MMA kind of exploded, and um, I made a name for myself out in California. Um, was out there for about ten years, and then moved back here, opened up Lawrence Fight Club, and continued fighting from there. That's awesome. Um, so. <clears throat> Fighting is a tough choice for to to make a living, you know. Um, 
And like you said, you know, there's a lot of hits to the head, you know, and it takes a different type of mindset, right? And that is one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk to you, just to kind of dig into that part of it, like the mindset that it takes to just get your ass kicked for a living or, or yeah. to kick ass for a living, you know? So who is Zach Busha, the person? Um, I mean, martial artist is definitely one of my one of my big titles and it was like a um i think it was because of it was just kind of like a choice i made you know um but i think before any of that i was it was just um, artist in general mm -hmm. um, because i love um i've always loved drawing and painting and all that stuff i got into martial arts and i saw the art in it and stuff like that um mm -hmm. i think artist would be a big title for me and i'm um loving um continuing continuing all that with coaching and all that yeah. stuff as well. Um, it's kind of hard to wrap yourself up into a little bit of a bundle, but um, I think artists would be a good one. Dad, husband. Dad. Yeah, dad, dad. <laughs> that's, that's a new one for me that uh, definitely caused me to shift gears and think of everything completely differently because it's, it's been a trip once um, you shift gears from um, just thinking about yourself for your whole life and um, that changed uh, my ideas on like, you know, success, which I know you're going to talk about and, and things like that. that. That all looks very different after that. Mm. It's actually the next question. But, you know, I really enjoy just seeing your journey as a dad and seeing your son grow just on social media. Right. Like he's he's always, you know, in the middle of the of the gym and he, you know, he's at the fights and you know, he's got his pacifier. In. <laughs> you know, like I I really enjoy that part, man. So I so I'm proud of you, bro, for for this new journey and this new step in your journey, you know? Cuz you seem to be rocking it. I I love it. It's it's the, it's the best best. <laughs> so yeah, how do you define success? Uh, that I've always been kind of at odds with success because, like, for me, as far as I can tell, it's just like a constant state of imposter syndrome. It's like no matter what you achieve, it's just it's uh, I don't know. You know, I had some ideas about where I wanted to go with stuff and what I wanted to wanted to be and do. Um, but I guess for me, it was just like my goal. My goal in life was just to collect as many awesome experiences and um, and all that as possible because I was never really into like the, um, the uh, material possession stuff or really worried about what, you know, what I was going to do um, about owning a bunch of things or having a bunch of money like that. But uh, like I said, now that I've become a father, like not that I'm all about the money now or anything like that, but it does look a little bit differently. I start, I'm thinking about stability a lot more and about, um, you know, working towards you know, owning a house and having a, a good, a good environment for him to grow up that feels stable and safe and all that stuff. So it's amazing how that changes, right? Because <laughs> yeah. before when I had to worry about me, I didn't care. It's like, well, if everything goes, if everything goes to hell, then I can just, you know, I, I don't care. I'll sleep on the street if I have to, as long as I'm doing what I love, it's not a big deal, you know, but it's yeah. different. <laughs> so it's kind of related. Um, what drives you? What's your why? Uh, like again, uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's um, having having a son um, pushes things now, and a, and a family. They you know they mean everything to me now. Uh, before that, um, I think it was just this drive to just get after it. That I don't really know where that came from. Um, uh, it's a good question. I didn't really prepare super well for some of these questions, but um, I'm going to think about that a little bit more. It's, it's cool. I, and, you know, that's part of, you know, I like it to just kind of come out of nowhere, right? Because you get the the right what's on your heart answer. You know what I'm saying? So don't, I, I, I don't send the questions ahead of time for that particular reason. So if we, if we circle back to it, cool. But, you know, one thing just you know, when you were talking about defining success and you, you know, you said gathering experiences is a goal right now. I love that, man. And it's something that people don't, you know, think about, right? Like, like we are really only, a, you know, 
a sum of our experiences, yeah. you know, and we and we actually have the power to choose what those experiences are most of the time, you know, and to, to have that as a goal is awesome. Yeah, getting experiences and getting new perspectives and then um, also what that <clears throat> what that does for your development and for your growth and, um, you know, as a person. You know, I think yeah. that's what it's all about. It's, I'm still I still feel like that's what it's about. So can you think of a major setback in your life that set you up that later set you up for for success? Um, not a specific one. Um, yeah, just growing up, you know, like I had some, you know, it was kind of crazy. My dad was kind of wild, you know, the long process. I don't think there was any, any one specific thing, um, that I can point, point to or one specific event, but, um, just kind of dealing with, you know, a lot of the stuff that along the way, you know. So how about this? Was was there a fight in your career that you know didn't go your way but put lit an extra fire under your ass? Yeah, well a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Got my ass kicked plenty. Um yeah, uh, there was um like I think there was one um I think it was my second strike force fight. Um I did something technically wrong and that's what it was always was for me. It's like, I didn't get emotional about these things, but, um, I, um, I fight Southpaw. So I fight like a left, like in a left-handed stance mm -hmm. and I didn't, I didn't, I guess I wasn't fully aware of how, um, uh, how, how open you are on, on the opposite side for a head kick. And I, and I yeah. got caught with, I got caught with one really nice. And then, um, the guy capitalized, it was a TKO. I was still, I was fine. It was a TKO, but he caught me real clean. And, um, <clears throat> I started looking into that. It made me more technical. It made me really, um, dive into, uh, which stances and uh, how much they, how much they change, uh, your openings and things like that. Um, yeah. Again, it's like all, all like martial, it's all it's all martial arts for me. It's all about technique and really diving into it. Um, as far as that's concerned, the art of it, right? You're an artist. <laughs> um, so, what is one of the best or most worthwhile investments you've ever made? Could be an investment of time, money, energy, etc. Yeah, um, investment in like in like experiences and stuff like that. I think are the big one like there's been times when I, I got an opportunity to uh to travel and stuff like that it, that's been huge i haven't got to do it nearly as much as i wanted to it never, never seemed like it's enough um but um you know you know just scraping by just with regular jobs and stuff like that an opportunity comes up like to go to china or something you know it's just like i don't have the money to do that but i was going to scrape everything i could every resource exhaust every resource to go do that you know and i got to go um, to china three different times wow and uh it was it was amazing every time to, to and again some of it's about perspective like learning perspectives meeting people over there like they're on people on the opposite side of the world you know things just look totally different you know when you're something like realizing you know <clears throat> that the world doesn't revolve around you know where you live and over there, it's like it's a totally, totally different thing. It really changes your, your perspective on stuff. Love that. It's a great answer, and and it does, man. And I haven't been out of the country personally, but you know, I've traveled a lot in America and just different, you know, different areas. It always intrigues me, man. Um, so, Zach, how do you define love? Love. Mm -hmm. Whew, man. Um. I don't know. That, that's a difficult, another difficult one. Um, but I, I do love really deeply. Um, so I know, I know that it's just, uh, just a deep, deep connection where you can kind of see yourself reflected in, you know, someone else, you know, or something else, you know, like you, you can kind of, it's like a, I don't want to say like a mirror, like you're loving, like you're literally loving yourself, but, um, yeah, something along those lines. It's a deep connection. Love it. So, can you think of a, a act of kindness 
you were once shown that you will never forget? Um, yeah, and a lot of these are memory based. <clears throat> so, like, like that, <laughs> like the one you told earlier, something maybe I didn't remember. <clears throat> but just knowing that people are willing to do stuff like that makes a makes a really big difference. Um, um, sometimes it's just like things just pop up that seem like they came out of the out of the universe and mm -hmm. really like speak to you as long as you're open to those experiences and stuff like that. So I think yeah. maybe being given like a, a book, like, um, mm -hmm. like, um, and like self development, Dwayne gave me one, you know, at a time where like, I think he just kind of read that I needed that at that point in time when I was like pretty young. <laughs> I remember the name of the book was, uh, it was creative visualization by Shaq T. Gawain. And it was a little bit, uh, uh, out there and a little bit, um, new agey and stuff like that. But, it, uh, it really like, um, just the content of the book made me feel like maybe my thoughts and, and, and um, the way that, um, you know, the way that I think really could affect, you know, my life and I could really actually, you know, I could really actually have some sort of control over my life and direct it in a way. Yeah. I love giving books as gifts. Um, I, I, I do that with my kids. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think they read them. You know, but like at some point they're going to have all of these books and, you know, it's like you said, almost, you know, related to like traveling, like when you can't leave and go to China, like books can give you that whole new world, that whole new perspective, you know, and as a gift, it's really, you know, it's really awesome as a gift. So I love that answer. And even if you don't, you don't, even if you don't pick up that, I mean, like the the student is ready the master will appeal like appear kind of like maybe if they don't read it right away and it's just something something about that book just um calls to them at, in a moment and then they're ready for it and it'll be there no that it's kind of the point of it right <laughs> yeah. um so in the last five years what new belief behavior or habit has most improved your life um just uh, learning to be a dad for sure um uh it was it was scary but like i mean a lot of a lot of um a lot of why i was so scary is just you know how much i i loved them from from the very beginning and it's just i didn't know i was worried you know because i i knew that I, I would do anything i needed to do to be a good dad but i didn't know how to or so it was just uh a lot to take in and a big process. I started changing um, my life around a lot. I started thinking about, well, maybe I should have some sort of stable job and things like that too. Mm. I love it. And how old is he? Uh, he is uh, three. Three. He'll be uh, four, four in September, September 1st. Oh, man. this the, You're in a great time. Like, this is a great time, man. Oh, my God. Enjoy it. Like, because it goes fast. You know, my, my oldest son, I had him when I was 19, and he's engaged, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and it seems like just yesterday he was running around in diapers, you know? Like... It goes fast, bro. So definitely, you know, enjoy every little moment, every little stage, because there's just different stages, you know. Yeah. And and that four to five kindergarten, like the whole world's opening up. They're starting to learn to read, and you know, like oh my god, it's great. So, <laughs> so what advice would you give to a driven kid about to enter the real world? Um, you know, uh, don't be afraid to take the risks while you're young, you know, like, um, and, uh, just, uh, attack whatever calls to you, you know, really go for it. Um, like, like when, as soon as I graduated high school, I jumped in a car with a couple of friends of mine, um, that I didn't know well, so it was, it was safe, but like I spent about a month on the road, ended up in California. I slept on 
my cousin's floor for like the, who lived out there for a couple of months and just learned how to live on my own. Um, you know, you know, be careful doing anything dangerous, but other than that, just reckless abandon, you know, do what you want to do, you know, do what you love, go after it. Love that. Um, so our mantra here at deeply rooted is kill the ego, ignite the soul. What does that mean to you? Um, to, uh, to kill the ego, I would say it'd be like to, to think beyond, you know, think greater than just yourself, maybe, you know, mm. if you're willing to like, let go of what you think that is just you, you can kind of connect to everything better and everyone a little bit better. And uh, I feel like that very thing would ignite your soul when you feel that connection, you know, to everything and everyone and kind of realize that uh, we are all kind of one. Mm. I love it. See, because for me, that's the goal, right? Like, get out of your own head and do what's calling you, you know? Like like you said, man, you had a calling and soon as you could, soon as high school was over, you took off and you went after it, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure for you, you know, like things like UFC and, and then champion and things like that, because you did have several belts, but like, I'm sure that was there at one point in time, right? But yeah. I wonder now, do you value the journey the way it was, right? Like like where you're at now, right? That journey yeah. has shaped who you are and it would be a completely different Zach I was talking to if you didn't take that risk, take that step, right? Yeah, yeah your ideas and your goals are gonna change along the way. I mean, you have you have that goal, of course, like if you start in mixed martial arts in particular, of course, like everybody starts off by thinking I'm going to, my goal is to be like the UFC champion of my weight class and stuff like that. And I've gotten to do a lot of amazing things along the way. I've gotten to fight for some pretty big organizations like Strike Force and Bellator, you know, which are, which are up there as well. Um, and mostly just collect some amazing experiences along the way. Um, and, um, yeah, and it was weird. I like my last fight. I, it's almost like it's almost like I had another shot at getting to the UFC because Dana White was supposed to be there, and they were looking for bringing people in. But at this point in my career, I was pretty happy with switching to coach mode. I didn't even know how many more fights I'm gonna take and stuff like that. I'm getting a little bit older to be getting in there, still getting my my head knocked around. Um, yeah, it was weirdly almost like a relief. It's like. It's, it's fine. I didn't, it, it didn't pan out the way that, that uh, I wanted this last fight to. Um, but like, honestly, I, one of the things I was panicking about is like, what if I just, what if I like just destroy this guy and Dana White wants to sign me? It's like at this point in my life, like, I don't even know if I'm ready for that roller coaster, you know, or, or if I'm just going to be happy. Um, Cause my goal now is like, you know, build somebody that can do that. Mm. Um, uh, Who's, who's, who's got the, the energy to do it and, and the means to do it. Cause I still think it's very possible. I think we can get people into the UFC for sure. And mm -hmm. then see where they go, go. So the goal has shifted, but I mean, you know, I don't, I don't um, uh, regret, regret anything or, or anything that went down. You know? Yeah. Just like, and, make it exactly where I wanted to go and be the, the number one best in the world. It's still, uh, the process has been amazing. Yeah, and you know, honestly, bro, if you, if you would have done a lot of that, you probably wouldn't have been home. You probably wouldn't have met your wife, and you probably wouldn't have your son, right? So it's like it all. We're all. I believe we're always exactly where we're supposed to be. You yeah. Know? So that's awesome, and and absolutely, like I love that you're providing that opportunity to someone else, right? Yeah. And 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 passing that on. It's kind of the same thing I, I did with the music, right? Um, I didn't leave when I could have. LA, New York, Atlanta, you know, but my kids were in Little League. My kids were, you know, rambunctious and mischievous and they needed me. And that was more important than like, like you said, like some type of accolade or some type of, you know, something that would have been for me, 
Yeah. You know, when they just needed a dad, you know? Yeah. So, well, yeah. I mean, all right. Yeah, I had, P I had PG when I was like 30, 30, what, 30, 34? However old I am. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if that, if that would have happened, if that would have happened, like if I would have had a kid when I was 19, then yeah, this route would have looked totally different because that would be my priorities would have been very different. But, yeah. All right, so we all have this moment in our journeys where we want to call it quits when we are when we are at our lowest, so to speak. When you reach that point in your journey, how did you fight through it? Um, you just kind of you just kind of keep going. I mean, I don't know if there's any any uh, magic to that one, as far as I know. You know, you just don't don't go to the easy stuff. Don't don't start self destroying or any of that stuff. You know, like get right back. So like, I think a lot of the times when that kind of stuff happens, it's just like maybe you didn't meet the goals that you wanted to, or you're feeling like <clears throat> it's just not worth worth it anymore or something like that. Like, it's time to pivot. You know, it's time to pivot and think about um, what a new goal and a new direction would be. You know, and and always be reaching for some sort of meaning in life, you know, that something, something you can work towards. Yeah. I think, I think of that Nemo movie, uh, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, when you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or have lost your focus temporarily, what do you do? Um, I cut out the distractions as much as possible because, um, you know, you can be staring at screens too much or whatever, you know, whatever it is you do to do to distract yourself from stuff. Um, and just really try to um, clear my head as much as possible. I don't do it as much as, as I, as I used to. Um, and it's something that I'm really wanting to get back into, but you know, breath work and meditation really like mm -hmm. getting rid of the extra, extraness that's going on in your head the incessant thoughts and really just like if i feel like i'm getting overwhelmed by stuff and and the you know the the voice in your head just keeps pounding away at you you just kind of <clears throat> breathe and, and um, let it all kind of go and uh, reconnect for a little bit i love it and you know i'm just really discovering breath work in these last couple of years and really like the power of it. And I'm just in the last couple of years able to actually meditate. Like, like, cause some, for some people it's hard to actually quiet that mind, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I, I agree. It's powerful, you know, just, just empty out, you know, and we, we breathe so shallow, right? Most people don't realize how shallow we breathe. Right. Yeah. And doing intentional breath work, you know, kind of just opens you up, allows you to get some air, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then, then the breathing is the is the gateway to meditation, you know, and then yep. like and meditation is a straight up superpower. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could have one gigantic billboard that the entire world would see, what would it say and why? Uh I don't know, because he would want it to not be too busy, I guess, and pretty direct. Uh, I guess the only thing, like, there used to be a fighter named uh, Ginky Sudo. Um, I don't know if, if, if any of you know fighting at all, but he was he was um, a fighter in Japan. And um, instead of, like, walking out with, like, uh, the Japanese flag or anything like that, like he would do, he would have um, these different flags that would usually, like, have, like, like the flags of like every country on it or something like that or the or the flag would just say like we are all one um that always stuck with me and he was what he was one of my favorite fighters of all time mm -hmm. um he was in a he's a really interesting guy he's he's a buddhist he's he uh retired from fighting a long time ago and now he has like some professional like he has like this really cool dance uh dance stage show that he does and stuff like that super sure. super interesting very cool guy so uh, I think I would put up his his uh, we are all one flag. I love it. I love it, man. Um, just a couple more questions and then we're done, man. You did. You've been killing this interview. So I just I want to thank you again.
Yeah. Um, if you could give a gift to every person in the world, what would it be? Hmm. A gift. Um, other than a book, kind of like the one that I that I got that kind of put me down a different path. Um, uh, maybe like a plane ticket to wherever they would want to go, you know, somewhere <laughs> where they would always want to see. I mean, that doesn't always give you the means to do so, but uh, it would be really cool. I love it. All right. Is there what song do you consider the soundtrack to your life, or do you have a song that you turn to for strength? For strength, um, it depends on where I'm at in life, because I, I I do really like to um, dive into music, and some of it's more obscure, you know. Um, I like progressive type uh, music for sure, um, but it depends, you know. Sometimes I'm feeling all over the place. One that maybe that would uh, that always pops up. Um, and I guess I don't even know what the song is about, but I love the the, the uh, Moody Blues song "Nights in White Satin" for some mm -hmm. reason. Okay, the, the vocals just really hit home for some reason. <laughs> I love it. So, Zach, is there anything we can do to support you? Um, if anybody's you know around Lawrence and wants to check out Lawrence Fight Club, um, come on down. It's it's uh. It's a great place. Uh, it's uh, it gives you a real uh, feeling of community, stuff like that. I love it, and we're all a big family. So if you want to come check us out, or if somebody, uh, <clears throat> if you know somebody who's interested and wants to check it out, is interested in martial arts, mixed martial arts, or any of that stuff, it's we we take in everybody from people who you know want to be that next MMA fighter or UFC fighter or you know people who just want a different way of working out and or be a part of a community that's of people that's going to always look out for them um yeah that'd be the best way I come love there. it man <laughs> I love it and I and I am going to come up there and say hi sometime man just just to step in you know um was well, that I appreciate you I appreciate the work you put in for the community I appreciate the dad that you've become. I appreciate your career, making your mom proud, putting in the work, man. You're, you're an example for all of us, man, and a fine one. So thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate what you're doing, too. This is really great that you're, um, you know, inspiring people and um, giving people the talk, uh, the opportunity to talk about, um, you know, what inspires them and stuff like that. No doubt. It's it's a duty and an obligation. That's how I look at it, right? Um, yeah. So tell tell your mom I said hi. Tell Kelly I said hi. hi. Hello to the family. Have a great evening, bro. All right. You as well. All right. Peace. Yeah, man. I love this damn show. Such, a, <laughs> such an awesome guy. Such a great conversation always. Um, you know, to... Make sure you follow us, YouTube, follow us, Instagram, Facebook, check out the website. Um, I suck at that part, but, you know, it has to be done. I'm trying to grow this thing, man. I feel like everybody could benefit from these conversations. So, you guys have a great evening. I love you. Next week, we have a, uh, someone from my past, like way, way back early in my music career, Miss Crystal Parker, um, is going to be a great conversation again. So I love you guys. Signing off. Deeply rooted. Peace.